Today on the Sunday interview, we are going to be meeting a very important person who, depending on which way the election swings, might end up as the wife of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. She is the wife of General Mohamedou Buhari, the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Hajia Aisha Buhari. Hajia Aisha Buhari was born in Adamawa State into the family of the first Minister of Defense, Honorable Mohamedou Ribadu. A thoroughbred Fulani woman, she is a granddaughter of the first Chiroma of Adamawa, a woman with a royal pedigree. Aisha Buhari was raised in the tradition of philanthropy, which has been a guiding principle in both her private and public life. An alumnus of the Hagmado Bello University, where she studied public administration, her quest for more education took her into the field of physiotherapy and beauty therapy. She is a graduate of international affairs and strategic planning. She is also an alumnus of the famous Carlton Institute of London and the Academy Aesthetique Beauty Institute of France, where she earned a postgraduate diploma in cosmetology and beauty therapy. A philanthropist, she has encouraged and supported her husband, General Mohamedou Bahari, in politics and private enterprise. Her marriage is blessed with children. You're welcome to the program. Please, could you tell us a bit about yourself? Uh, my name is Aisha Muhammad Bwari, the wife of the former head of state. I am from Adamawa State, born and brought up in Adamawa. I've attended a primary school, secondary school in Adamawa before getting married. Though I was about to start a university, then I got married. In fact, I even got admission on mass communication. <laughs> so why didn't you follow up on your mass communication? I got married eventually. So. Okay. The man Buhari, he's an enigma to many people. Tell us what he's really like, the real Buhari. The real Buhari is someone that's very simple, jovial, very understanding, has a very high sense of humor. So you laugh and joke a lot in the house? Yeah, yeah, we do. <laughs> Your husband, he seems extremely passionate about Nigeria. What brought this about? I think when he was the head of state, the way he handled Nigeria, and people have started changing then. And then all of a sudden he was toppled. So I think he feel like Nigerians are very, very good and wonderful people. They just need a leader, a very good leader. And that's it. How do you cope with this cult-like following of him? It's like everybody is rooting for him. How do you feel? Uh, sometimes very emotional. Even himself, he feels the same way. Um, for you to see people, you know, dying even to touch you, like somebody is quite poor, to go and save 200 naira, 300 naira, and send it to you, I think it's very, very, very touching. <laughs> now let's talk about you for a while. What was your growing up like? Just like a normal northern girl going to school in the morning, going to Western education in the morning, and then in the afternoon going for Islamic school. Okay. So did you enjoy going to school? Yeah, I did. You did? Yeah. What were your favorite subjects? Um, government. And now you're in government. <laughs> yes. So I think you are well prepared for it. <laughs> yes. Your husband encouraged you going back to school. Is he a believer in the education of the girl child? Yeah, sure, sure. He is. Actually, when I got married, um, I feel that I must continue with my education. And he too, he wants me to do that. I could remember when he wrote a letter 
yeah, shortly after we got married, he gave me a letter to take it to my uncle, my late uncle, um, Professor Isa Abba, who was a lecturer in ABU for 30 years in history department. So he wrote a letter to him saying that uh, he wants me to continue with my education and he also wants me to be a very good housewife. So he doesn't know how to compare the two. So how did you combine the two, being a housewife and going to school? It was not easy, okay. not easy at all. Because I came from a learned family. I have some of my uncles. We have like five, four or five professors that are from the same parents with my mother and some with my father. So I just can't afford to fold my arms and, you know, hands and at home and sit and say, okay, I'm the wife of the pres former president of Nigeria without going to school. So it was really a very, very difficult um, task for me. But I thank God today I'll be able to manage the two and then. You have a master's? Yeah. I have an CE, a certificate in um, national education, national certificate of education. of education, that's NCE, and then I have um, a degree in public administration, mm -hmm. then I have a diploma in beauty therapy, and a certificate goes on health, safety, and employment standard from the UK as well. And then I enrolled in um, for the master's program at the NDA, Nigerian Defense Academy. I studied international affairs and strategic studies. Strategic studies. Yes. So you are strategically placing <laughs> us. Um, people say that you are a firm believer in women's rights. I mean, coming from the northern background, where they say that women tend to be more submissive than the rest of the country. Yeah. What brought this about? Mm, actually, I was born with eight boys. I have two senior brothers and then six younger brothers. Are you the only girl? Almost. Almost? <laughs> okay. Almost. And um, right from the beginning, I feel that everybody should stand for his or her rights. Even when we were young, my father noticed that. So my mother kept praying for me to have a husband that's so, you know, tolerant. <laughs> Somebody that can tolerate me. Okay. So that means you, you, you must be very opinionated. Undomitable. <laughs> <laughs> Quite undomitable. And um, um, even when I got married, like a few months after getting married, we try, we're still trying to know each other with my husband. There was uh, like a few years ago, he was telling me, he said, when we're newly married, whatever he says to me, the way I will answer, he was thinking that it's the woman that was with me that telling me what to tell him. He didn't know that I was on my own. <laughs> How do you think that um, you'd be able to influence him on giving women's appointments in, into his cabinet? I don't need to influence him because he's so passionate about women and he knows that once a woman gets it right, everything consider it done. So we should be expecting to see a lot of female yes. appointments? Not even appointments. You know, I think people are mistaking, you know, some few things okay. by this um, gender rights. inequality yes. or gender rights. Like picking one woman from a state, giving her a ministerial post, they think that women are represented. I don't think, for me, I don't think women are well represented. Because if a woman in the village doesn't know who is a minister, doesn't know what's happening, um, I think picking one woman, picking one enlightened, sophisticated woman to be a minister, I'm not going against female being a minister, but I feel that she may not have a rapport with the real rural women, and that's why it matters. So how do you intend to change this? Yeah, I think the best thing to do is to empower or give positions, key positions to women from local government, 
where they are, we feel that they are very close to the grassroots. They can feel the masses pulse and they know where it pinches, so I think they'll perform better. The present First Lady has been casting a lot of aspirations on your husband and also some other people in political positions. How do you feel about this? Considering the fact that you were also attacked on your way back from Ilorin. Yeah, um, it's very unfortunate the way they play politics because we need to play it healthy in order to set an example for the next generation. Because our children are watching us and they are copying us. So I feel that they should copy something good from us. So what would you do differently? Just to have limitations in whatever you're doing and whatever you're saying. This is one point, so point that has been following your husband around. And I know that if nobody else can answer this question, you can answer it. What is the real state of your husband's health? My husband is old, but he is very, very, very healthy. Very, very, very healthy. So all the rumors... I can assure them that, yeah, he is very, very healthy. You have a nickname. Gogo. Yeah. Please tell us what this name means. Gogo in Hausa means auntie. Uh, um, means stepmother. But in Fulani, it means auntie. Either a sister to your father or your mother. So, why are you called Gogo? I don't know. I think it's the Hausa culture. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe you have been playing the role of a sister or an auntie or a mother. To yeah, um, actually that was how I was introduced by my husband to his uh, children, that's my stepdaughters. The very first day we met, he said, this is Gogo. So I was asking him, what is Gogo? He said, um, it's um, a wife to your father or to your uncle or to... So your husband gave you the nickname? So to say. <laughs> now getting back to political things, the Chippo girls, what do you think could have been done differently? Mm, I think that one involved security. Um, I think when corruption is tackled in Nigeria, we'll get the rest of the things done properly or the way it should. Hmm when corruption is tackled. And that happens to be one of the very strong points of, of your husband's manifesto. Of course, because it's our major problem, or rather it's our only problem. Corruption, corruption, corruption. Now, just before I go, I want you to tell us something that other people don't really know about you. Um, I am a lady that hate hypocrisy. Um, I want openness. And I'm a lady that's firm. I'm undomitable. So these are all the qualities that endeared the general to you. Madam, thank you very much for this interview. It's thank been you. a wonderful time spending thank with you. you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Adja Aisha Buhari also talked to my colleague Jokeli Jadu about women, the country, and the upcoming election. Now, as a mother, you you were you know you you've urged you know Nigerians not to stone anybody, you know as 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 contrary to the current president's wife. Why are you taking the peace side? Um, in politics, since the democracy has come to stay, we're supposed to practice it like the way we practice our religions. You know, our children copy from us, so we should never ever preach violence. We have to play politics with morality, with integrity, and with capacity, not violence. Mm. It's not a good thing at all. Now, judging by all the bashes that you know, the current First Lady gets from different quarters, are you in any way scared you know, of taking this position? Because I would be scared, you know. <laughs> uh, would you say you are you know, in any way scared? No, I'm not scared because I know my limitations. Mm. I know my boundaries. Mm. 
So once you attempt going beyond where you should be, you can receive all sort of things, mm. you know. Now, role models, as far as role models, you know, go, who are those you would say inspire you as a woman? I see that, like, every woman that can stand up for herself or on her own, undomitable woman, courageous woman, that's my role model. Now, if, you know, you know and when you, you are to, you will become, you know, the, the, the first lady, say, May 29, what are your plans for the office of the first lady? Yeah, first of all, we have to, as you are saying, that the current first lady is receiving, you know, <laughs> bashes from all corners mm -hmm. <laughs> of the country. I, I think um, the former um, the former first lady, uh, may her soul rest in peace, Mrs. Maria Mbabangida, she introduced the first lady the office. office. Yes, yes. But I think she did that on a good faith. But I'm feeling now that she died with the glory of the office. Mm. I think I would prefer to be called the wife of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria mm. than the First Lady of Nigeria. Oh, okay, now, so l let me rephrase that question in that light. Now, you know, say, you know, you become the wife of the President of Nigeria. What, you know, if elected, you know, what, what are some of the things that, you know, you would have in place? you know, as, as, as you give back to the people? Um, like they normally ask me some questions concerning a pet project because some women, uh, the past first ladies, they all had their own pet uh, projects. For me, maybe I may have, but I don't have one now because there are a lot of problems in the country mm. and there are a lot of women with good ideas. Mm. If I decided to come up with one program that that you know that will make everybody's attention tilted to one mm. area i think the rest of the programs uh, may not come up or not survive mm. because a lot of women have good ideas if there's any projects a genuine project from different people i will help champion the pro the programs rather than me having only one pet program Her family and friends also spoke about her. She has a very strong character, very strong character. As it was said earlier on, she was called um, Gogo. She's called Gogo at home because of the responsibilities it entails. When you're called Gogo in the north, uh, in a family, it shows that you you are very tolerant and um, accommodating to every member of the family, extended, nuclear and extended. Haji Aishit Muhammad Buhari is someone very passionate about women to see that uh, they are being empowered politically and otherwise. She's peaceful, a very peaceful woman, a homely person, a mother and a very good wife. And um, I know she's going to carry out this qualities that she has to take care of the Nigerian women. She's a, a woman of integrity. She's a very hard working. She's a very hard working and very enterprising woman. A woman that won't have a, a problem, she's, she'll always be there to share the problems with you. A woman that you, you can depend on. A woman that your headache is a headache. A woman that loves people. She's highly detribalized. That is one thing that drew me very close to her. Because I am Israelian by birth, a Nigerian by marriage, and I am a Catholic. The particular incident seems to have caught the nation's attention, but I believe that is who she is on a regular day. Once when I was visiting with her in Abuja, we decided to go out and as we walked down the road to get some suya, there seemed to be so much attention and she was so kind to everyone, the way she greeted everyone. And for a while, people weren't sure who she was. We saw a lady who was frying a kara, and we sort of started chatting to her, and we stood watching her fry her kara. And before I knew it, she took the spatula and started you know, helping her with the kara. It was just a reflection of her humane, character 
and it shows how much she cares for everyone. The things that um, people see and imagine is for the camera. That was just a regular day. On a party note, Ajia Buhari asked Nigerians to vote for her husband. I'm just calling for Nigerians to come out in mass, collect their PVCs, and vote for APC. For a, new, for a change, a better Nigeria, and a new Nigeria. That's all we have on the Sunday interview today. Join us next week for another edition as we bring you another special package. I am Adibisi Olumidi Ajayi. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.